ओम ज्ञान ज्ञानंजन शलाकाया चक्षुरन मिलितम ये न तस्माय श्री गुरुवे नमः हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे राम हरे राम जय श्री राम जय श्री राम आई फील लाइक एन ओल्ड क्रोकिंग जटायु माय वॉइस इज नॉट वेरी स्वीट टुडे बट आई प्रे दैट भगवान रामचंद्र and his devotees overlook the non sweet quality of my voice and that despite the croaking sounds the lord be pleased with his glorification <coughs> just as bhagavan ram chandra is pleased with the the croaking of jatayu calling out jai shri ram more pleased than that of many sweet voice gandharva singing jatayu is a you've all heard of jatayu i hope we'll all be hearing more about him during the upcoming ram katha he's a great inspiration for all of us because he desired to serve the lord and he did his best to do so but he was apparently incapable of doing so he wanted to stop ravana abducting sita but he was not capable but nevertheless he got the full blessings of lord ram for his sincere attempt to do so so that's a, a great inspiration for all of us because It's not easy to serve the Lord in this Kali Yuga. Our own material desires are like big ravenas, who it seems very difficult to combat. But we should try our best with the faith that if we try, the Lord will be satisfied and He will help us. so it's very good that the ram katha is going to be held here first annual ram katha for navratri although we're in the second day of navratri it's a tradition going on since time immemorial in punya bharat bhumi pious india and despite india's tremendous progress in recent years in becoming impious <laughs> they are nevertheless these pious activities go on side by side so we will find there must be thousands of ram kathas going on during this time if we, if we go in the, the villages and towns of all over rajasthan gujarat practically all over north india especially in north india. i think in in bengal i didn't see in south india did you ever did you ever see where are south indians i didn't see in south india but in north india it's right north india means the, the hindi speaking area hindi punjabi gujarati like this it's and mostly they'll recite ram charitmanas or what which they call hindi ramayana our vaishnava acharyas in the uh authorized vaishnava sampradayas they prefer to or they they recognize valmiki krita ramayana the original ramayan composed in sanskrit by valmiki has been authoritative but apart from tulsi das's famous rendition of ramayana in hindi or actually in avadhi there are many regional in in the regional languages of india there are many 
editions of Ramayana. In Tamil, there's the Kamba Ramayana. In Bengal, what is that? It's Bengali Ramayana? Hmm? It's only beginning with Ka. Kashidas? Something like that. I can't remember. Kashibashi. I can't remember. It's something beginning with Ka. I can't remember. In Telugu, they have. In Oriya, in all the local languages, they have. But the original Ramayana, which is considered most authoritative, is that of Valmiki. <coughs> so that will, that's been rendered yeah, in English. We have an edition here, and that will be read with, let's see, not in, ver- not in the original verse form, but in narrative prose form, and that will be recited during the upcoming days here, with uh, Hindi also. So please come and hear about Lord Ram. Shinu Sukhadam Shubhadam Babasaram. By hearing about the avatars of the Lord, even though we live in this material world, which is after all miserable, despite all our attempts to forget that it's miserable, or pretend that it's not miserable, or make endeavors to find some happiness in this miserable place. The material world is, for all our endeavors to render it otherwise, inescapably miserable. However, there is one thing that we can do to uh, mitigate the misery, even while we're in this miserable material world, and at the same time, make uh, ourselves become prepared to enter the world of no misery, and that is to hear about the wonderful pastimes of the Supreme Lord. So the, the pastimes of the Supreme Lord, they are described in the Vedic literature, especially the Puranas, Mahabharata, and Ramayana. And three books in particular, they are at the heart of Punya Bharatiya Sanskriti, the the pious culture of India. They've traditionally been the basis of the whole way of life, the the, the art, the architecture, the festivals, the, the literature, the conversations between people. The whole way of thinking is based on Mahabharat, Ramayana, and Srimad Bhagavatam. So everyone, everyone knows Ramayana, at least formally. In India, everyone was fully aware, because from childhood, they, not during, only during Navratri, but not only during these nine nights, during these nine nights, there should be recitation. That means all night. You hear Ram Lila. So in, in nine nights it will be completed. But then during the rest of the year, there will also be recitations and dramas performed. And in this way, even most of the people of India were illiterate. But they were not uneducated. We, th- we equate education with literacy, the ability to read and write. But even the un- most of the people were uneducated. They didn't know how to read and write, or only in a very basic way. But they were not uneducated because they knew, they knew so many pastimes of the Lord. They knew the most important thing, that we are not the body, we are eternal spirit soul, we are part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, who they would worship as Sita Ram, Lakshmi Narayana, Lakshmi Narasimha, Radha Krishna, Krishna Rukmini Sattabhama. In his various forms, people uh, were attached to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, 
knew his pastimes, had great faith in that. It was not unusual in India, even until recently, that people in old age, they would just spend all their time reading the pastimes of the Lord, or chanting about them, and even all night they would go on chanting the Holy every night. The God-conscious culture was so strong. One Krishna, Christian missionary in India, in the, uh, he commented in the 19th century, he commented that there is not a single person in the whole of North India who does not know the whole Ramayan by heart. They know it all because they've heard it so many times. And not just hearing, but they'll discuss among themselves regularly what we dis- what do we discuss? We discuss news, gossip, sports news, political news. But there's no use to all this. We, we discuss all that. And sports is completely meaningless. But we ascribe meaning to it. We think here in Canada, hockey is very popular, right? That's the main sport. But it doesn't matter whether this team what we call a team, we've imagined to be a team, although they, they have no, the, the members of the team have no particular relationship with each other, but we call them a team, and there's a puck, is it, they, they call that? And so whether it goes in between this piece of wood, these two pieces of wood or not, actually makes no difference to anything, but we ascribe meaning to it, and therefore we think it's very important. And even politics, we want to throw out all the politicians, stop the conspiracy. There are so many conspiracies. We are all victims of political intrigue. It's a fact. So we should throw out all the politicians, protest. What is the use? And then another set will come. There's, there's always some conspiracy. It's always going on. So there's no use. We should be thankful that if the politicians allow us to chant Jai Sri Ram and Hare Krishna, we should be thankful enough for that. There's no use to make all political uprisings. And no use. It's not going to... Purification of consciousness is required. And that is possible by hearing the pastimes of the Lord. That's why in India, the... The people in general, they didn't care that much who, they, who was ruling, whether it's Hindu, Muslim, Christian, whatever. They thought, if, as long as we can go on chanting the names of the Lord and hearing about the Lord, then what does it matter? That's their business. They want to be, they're foolish enough to argue over what they, they think they're the ruler. That's, that's their business. But our business is to hear and chant about the pastimes of the Lord. So that, that was the culture. It, there, was, there, were, there were people in general were not ambitious. They were content to live very simply and chant the names of the Lord and hear about it. And it's only uh, recently that Indians have become. Of course, this is a great generalization. There's so many generalizations we're saying here, but it's only more recently that Indians have become materialistic. So much the whole mood is we have to make lots of money and be successful. And, but otherwise, people were content that whatever food the Lord sends, that is His mercy. Whatever arrangements are there, that's His mercy. Be content. We, there's no use to strive, make so much endeavor for material acquisitions. But let us go on hearing about the Lord. And that was the, that was the pleasure. Hearing and chanting about the Lord. And like I say, even in their ordinary conversation and their whole way of life that uh, people would discuss the, the, the pastimes of the Lord. The the boatman rowing his boat, because there are no bridges, so the boatman would row people over, and he would sing about the, the pastimes of the Lord. The 
farmers in the field plowing. That was common until recently. There was no chug, 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 chug of the tractor. They were behind the bulls. And they would sing you from the fields. You would hear the people sing. That was, that was their pleasure as they plowed with the bulls in the field. Early in the morning, even in the big city, I remember I used to, sometimes I'd be in North Calcutta especially, early in the morning, walking, just going somewhere, ding, 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 ding. You hear people are doing, they're ringing the bells and offering arti. That was the whole culture. Only recently it became spoiled by late night TV and so NTV, music TV and so many nonsense things. So this Krishna consciousness movement is meant to revive the pristine culture we say of India because that is the place in this universe where this culture is most prominent. But actually it's Vaikuntha culture. This is the culture of the spiritual world. Hearing about Lord Ram, hearing about the Lord in his various incarnations is the method of purification by which our consciousness becomes absorbed in thought of him. Such that when we leave this world, instead of desiring that I shall enjoy myself on and on and on in this material world, being free from this illusion, we are simply attached to hearing about Krishna, Rama, Nrishinya Dev, especially these, these forms of the Lord are particularly dear. Krishna and Ram all over India are widely worshipped. Nrishimhadev also all over India and Nepal but particularly in Andhra Pradesh and other parts of South India we'll find the worship of Lord Nrishimhadev. Of course as Gorya Vaishnavas our Upasya, our worshipable forms are Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Radha Krishna Mahayana, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who is the combined form of Radha and Krishna. So he worship Radha and Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is worshipped by Gorya Vaishnavas. Either with Radha Krishna or or <coughs> Gaur Gadadha or Gaur Nitai. These are the common traditional forms of worship. But it's not that Ram Leela is extrinsic to Gorya culture. Marari Gupta, great devotee of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who was his chief biographer of his early Leela, his pre sannyas Leela, his Navadip Leela. He is Hanuman. He is Hanuman come in Gaur Leela. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wrote on his head, Ram Das. Anupam. Vala, the brother of the great Rup and Sanatan Goswamis and the father of the great Jiva Goswami was a great devotee of Lord Ram and a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya. And Rup and Sanatan, they would again and again say to him that we, we appreciate your worshipping Lord Ram but why don't you give that up and then you can worship Radha and Krishna together with us. So he had no uh, inclination to that. He was so much attached to Lord Ram. But eventually, uh, again and again, being told and thinking that they're my elder brothers, I should do what they said. That was also the culture which we find from Ramayana. How the younger brothers, they simply follow Lord Ram. There are so many instructive 
so many instructions. The whole Ramayana, Mahabharata, especially didactic literatures to guide us how to live a good life in this world. So we find that the younger brothers of Lord Ram, they were, they treated him as good as their father, which in modern Western culture might mean that you slap him in the face. But there was no such question. In, even recently in Western culture, I want to speak of in Indian culture, that one simply, the, the, the father, the elder brothers, they have to be respected. And even if they mistreat you, apparently, or still, they're to be respected. That is the culture. So, Anupam, who was later called Bala by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he eventually agreed that yes, all right, I'll do what you say. From tomorrow, I shall stop worshipping Lord Ram, and I shall join you in worship of Radha and Krishna. So the next morning he came, looking very distressed, and he said that, I simply have to give up my life, because I promised to you that I would give up my worship of Lord Ram, but I already placed my head at his lotus feet, and I cannot remove it from there. So I, I, I cannot stop my worship of Lord Ram, and that means I cannot follow your instruction. So he thought, either way I'm an offender. But you, I cannot stop worshipping Lord Ram. So Rupa and Sanatana were very satisfied with him, that you, you are real devotee. That even despite all our attempts to change your mind, you could not. You could not. Even you agreed theoretically. But you, your bhakti for Ramachandra Bhagavan is so strong that you could not stop that. We find also that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was residing at Puri, would regularly celebrate Ram Vijay Mahotsa. He would, and, and Diwali, he would dress as Hanuman and attack uh, an imaginary Lanka and become really strong about it. Where is that Ravana? <laughs> when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was traveling in South India, in one village he was invited to the home of one Brahmana. You come for lunch. That was the standard system. A sannyasi would wander here and there, preaching the glories of the Lord. And the local Brahmanas would invite him for lunch. So he didn't, he didn't have to worry about going to the supermarket or any such thing. His needs were, his physical needs were taken care of. <coughs> so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came after, after performing his Madhyana, Madhyana Kriya, oh, bathing, various rituals to be performed at midday. He came to the house of the Brahmana and saw that, that no cooking was done. There was no food. There was no arrangement. He said, well, what's going on? You invited me, but there's none. You should, you should have... Did. You're worshipping the Lord either as the deity or Shalagram. Then by midday the offering should be finished. And then prasad should be distributed. But there was no, there was no offering. There was no, there was no prasad. There was no even bow. There was nothing, no sign of any cooking. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu asked, why you invited me to come, but there's, you haven't made any offering to the Lord. He said, well, well Sita's late, late coming back from the forest. She didn't bring any, she didn't bring any roots. So anything to cook yet, so when she comes, I'll cook. So this is Bhav Seva. He was feeling, I'm, I'm part of the Lord's pastimes, Ram Leela. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very much appreciated that. But he saw that the Brahmana was very sad. So he asked, why are you so sad? The devotee of the Lord should always be happy. 
ब्रह्म भूत प्रसन्न आत्मा न शोचति न कामचति दैट ऑल आई एम सो अनहैप्पी बिकॉज दिस रावण हैज किडनैप सीता इट्स हॉरिबल चैतन्य महाप्रभु चैस्टाइज इट Pandit, pandit, how you can I not call a happy child? You're a pandit, a brahmana. You're learned in shastra. Why don't you consider properly that <coughs> Sita Devi, she is the antaranga shakti. She is the uh, she is the internal energy, or she is the direct potency. Of Lord Ram Chandra Bhagwan, I don't need water. I need a different throat, <laughs> throat transplant. <laughs> Thank you. Nevertheless, for the kind thought, I'm in Jatayu Bhav. I wish I, w- I wish I was. If I could be in that mode of Jatayu, he is the example of literally giving one's life for the service of the Lord. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that Sita Devi, <clears throat> she cannot be Ravana, a demon like Ravana cannot even see her. What to speak of touching her? What to speak of abducting her? It's not possible. I read in the Ramayana, and everyone knows Sita is kidnapped. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went off. And after some days, he came to one temple, where he heard some brahmanas reciting the Kurama Purana. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu very happily listened to that narration. And within that narration, he heard that what happened that when Ravana came. Agni Dev took the original form of Sita and replaced that form with Maya Sita, a facsimile of the original Sita, and that was the form that was abducted by Ravana. So we all know the story. For me, it's the most—I don't know. It's difficult to say, but it's maybe the most. Touching part of the whole Ramayana, that after the whole the Ram searching for Sita Devi, crying out Sita, Sita, in great distress in the forest, and eventually they come across Jatayu, and there's some hope that, or at least there's some idea he's been kidnapped by Ravan, and where is Ravan and the big hunt, and they find they come across Jatayu, directs you go and see this. Hanuman and big long story how the Hanuman goes to Lanka and eventually Ram goes to Lanka and it's a big fight and it's a whole big story how they eventually kill Ravana and then Rama brings out Sita after so much endeavor at last and then. Sita comes out, and Ram says to her, "All right, now you can go wherever you like. I cannot accept you. You've been away from me in the custody of another man. So then, why did you why why did you fight? Why did you kill so many rakshasas and so many monkeys have been killed? That was to protect the honor of our family." But as far as I am concerned, I cannot touch you because you have been touched by another man. So then, uh, Sita, she protested that there, there, there was the Agni Pariksha was arranged. The monkeys, they were. Although generally a woman will not come into public, but the monkeys were very. The followers of Lord Ram were very anxious to see who is this, who is this woman for for whose sake so many people have died. How is she? 
They wanted to see how beautiful she was, not from any lusty motive, but out of appreciation. So Sita Devi, she said, then I, I will end a fire. And if even for one moment or one thousandth of a moment, my mind even slightly diverged from full devotion to the lotus feet of Lord Ram, even for a particle of a second, if I ever had any, even the slightest attraction or desire for Ravana, then may the fire burn me. If not, then I should come out. So Lakshman had to build the fire. And then the, the, he built the whole pyre. And Sita Devi entered that. And all the monkeys are screaming. Ah, ah. And Sita Devi entered and came out again. And when she came out, that was the original form that Agni Devi was returning. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very glad to hear this. And he got a copy of the Koma Purana. There was no bookshop. That means it had to be copied out by hand. It takes quite a long time, but Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took the time. He had this copied out, and he went back to that brown who was still lamenting. Oh, Sita's been kidnapped by Ravana and brought this. He said, Here, can you please take this? This is the evidence. That Sita Devi, she was never touched by Ravana. So now you stop your fasting, and stop lamenting and be happy. So Ram Leela is there in Gorya Vaishnavism. Certainly the, the, uh, the focus of Gorya Vaishnavism is on Radha Krishna. But it's not that we don't know about or we don't appreciate the pastimes of Lord Ram. Rather that we, we appreciate so much because Sita Ram are Radha Krishna in another form. And certainly all the great devotees throughout history have, uh, all the great devotees of Radha Krishna have also known and appreciated the pastimes of Lord Ram. This is, they, they are narrated briefly in the ninth canto of Bhagavatam where Shukadev Goswami says to Parikshit Maharaj that in the course of describing the Surya Vamsha, the two great Kshatriya dynasties, Surya Vamsha and Soma Vamsha. So in Surya Vamsha, Lord Ram appeared. And in Soma Vamsha, Lord Krishna appeared. The, the, the dynasties of the sun and the moon. So, in the course of narration of the Surya Vamshi kings, Shukadev Goswami said, I'll narrate to you now about the pastimes of Lord Ram, but only in brief, because you've heard it many times. Since time immemorial, everyone has heard the pastimes of Lord Ram. Not only in India, but throughout the, the whole greater India area, even today, in what's presently called Indonesia, the acting out, even though they're theoretically Muslims, the, the culture of various parts of Indonesia is based on Ram Lila. Maybe you know the, the name of Indonesian airlines is Garuda Airways. So that, that culture was spread all over what is now called Southeast Asia. I'm going to Thailand in a couple of days. And there they have also Ram Kemahen, this the Thai version of, of uh, Ramayana. Palam, they say, Param means Sri Ram. 
So that, that was known. The kings of Thailand, even today, are called Rama. That is their official title. His culture was fully widespread. We find also that the Vrajavasis, they also knew about Krishna Lila. Ram Lila. Krishna Lila, they are Krishna Lila. Ram Lila, they also knew. Because we find that the gopis, they were discussing, saying to Krishna, that we know you're not, you're not a very good person. They were chastising Krishna. Out of pure love, they said that we, we, we can't trust you. You're a very bad character. It's not, not only in this life, but even in previous lives. We've heard from Purnamasi how you came as a nice Brahmana boy, Vamande, and Bali Maharaj received you so nicely, but you simply cheated him and took away all his possessions and tied him up. You completely betrayed his trust. And then when you came as Lord Ram, this Shurpanaka, she, you're a Kshatriya and she's a woman and she came and proposed to you. And you cut her nose off. So what kind of behavior can we expect from you? You're a crooked person. Life after life. This was their loving chastisement of Krishna. So we can understand from this that the gopis, they also were fully aware of Ram Lila. So let us also be hear about Lord Ram, the wonderful pastimes of Lord Ram. You've all, I hope, heard the pastimes of Lord Ram again and again and again. But the wonderful feature of hearing the pastimes of the Lord is that the more we hear them, the sweeter they become. We all know that Ravana is going to kidnap Sita, but nevertheless when we hear what's going on, what's going to happen, the drama doesn't become any less. This is Ananda Chinmaya Rasa. This is on the transcendental platform. These thriller novels, you read one time, if you're a fool in the first place to read it, and then you throw it away because you know the story and there's nothing more to be relish. But the pastimes of the Lord, <coughs> we hear again and again and again and hearing again and again. Shunu Sukhadam Shubhadam Bhavasara. We attain actual happiness and actual auspiciousness in this world which is otherwise patently miserable. So this is the this is the cure for material life and the, the only way to live happily in this world and to prepare ourselves to go to the world beyond birth and death is to hear the pastimes of the Lord. So that system is going on since time immemorial in India. Now that culture is much compromised, but still in India that culture is much compromised. But still, during these nine nights, There'll be thousands and thousands of recitations of different places throughout. Even in even in the towns, you'll find in different places within the town. At every Ram temple, any Hanuman temple, even in Krishna temples, even in Durga temples, or just even in people's houses, any the, the recitations of Ram Lila will go on. So this old ancient culture is going on, no doubt in a somewhat compromised way, but still going on. Even though it's somewhat compromised in India itself, the, the plus point is that by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, this culture is now spread all over the world. So it's very good that this recitation will st take place here also. And we can institute so many festivals. Just like for Nushinga Chaturdashi, we could also have several days of Nushinga Kata, for instance. It's a suggestion. Let there be more and more 
talk of the pastimes of the Lord. This will cure our diseased propensity of discussing anything else. Newspapers, daily, on a Sunday, the newspaper, it's, it's like a... If you fold it up, you could injure someone by hitting it so heavy. So much gramya kata, discussion of various aspects of this material world. And let, let us stop this gramya kata and discuss the pastimes of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That will begin. The, or, this is the beginning. This is the inauguration. This is the introduction. And systematically the Ramayana will be read from tomorrow and that will continue for another up until Sunday. So another six days. So please come. And absorb your minds in hearing about the beautiful pastimes of Lord Ram. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama, Rama Hare. Often people ask us, why do you emphasize Krishna so much and not Ram? Well, I, I tell them what well, we chant the name of Lord Ram thousands of times every day, probably more than almost all the Ram people who call themselves Ram Bhaktas. So, we are also worshipping Ram. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Any question about this? Not much question. About Leela we can listen. There may be questions, but... Mostly we just listen, listen and appreciate. Leela is is so many things. When listening to Leela on the pastimes of the Lord, it requires a certain mentality to him. There should be some basic faith. In a challenging mood, we cannot hear. We We have to accept that this is all true, this is all factual, a skeptic cannot listen to the pastimes of the Lord. So one who has faith, they can hear and appreciate. Anyway, if there is any question, I can attempt to answer it. If not, then we'll go on chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Krishna Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. You have a question, please. Do you have the cordless mic system here? All right, say it and I'll repeat it in the mic. world, how can we not be affected by Gramya Kata? Well, it's difficult because we're surrounded by it. That's why we should have sadhana, morning and evening. Reinforcement. And then whenever possible, get a super dose by going to the temple and engaging in these festivals and functions. Try to get, try to be aloof. It's best not to live in the world. It's best to live in the association of devotees. Prabhupada therefore wanted to set up Vaishnav communities where people